Hey, hey, DJ Anubis. And DJ Neko. Here with you on the Mountain Radio Podcast, doing another movie review. This time, doing 1988's Primal Rage. And it is directed by Vittorio Rambaldi. Cast is Patrick Lowe as Nash, Cheryl Arut as Lauren, Sarah Buxton as Debbie, and it also features Bo Svensson. Plot is, a scientist at a Florida university inadvertently creates a rage virus while performing experiments intended to restore dead brain tissue and baboons. When a journalist for the college paper breaks into the campus lab, he's bitten by one of the infected baboons. The virus soon spreads to a trio of rapists and a valley girl, all of whom go on killing sprees. Literally a trio of rapists. <laughs> <laughs> Not real life, just let's just, just the movie. It's it's anyway. We'll uh, <clears throat> in typical Ace fashion, this film has a lot of bad acting. Uh, but as Neko so vehemently pointed out, that's what it's intended for. <laughs> I mean, I I honestly, I feel when you have a cheesy movie and you're not trying. To be, I don't know, the Godfather. <laughs> you appreciate the bad movie more. It's like those stupid, like Lifetime Christmas movies. They're all the same. They have all the same plot. Girl moves away, comes home, finds the guy that she used to be in love with, and oh, there's problem. It's, well, that's uh, I mean, if you remember, that was how it was kind of started. Mm -hmm. Like the Lauren comes out of somewhere. Her car is about to be towed, and all of a sudden, Nash pulls up in his little Vespa. It's a little <laughs> Vespa. It's a scooter. And I was like, where are your balls? He's like, yeah, I got my stuff. He's like, a, he's basically a journalist photographer of a local newspaper at the, the it's, college. It's the college newspaper. No, I'm not. Don't, don't think that I'm knocking that because you have to realize um, that's how a lot of these, I, I, I don't even know what university it is, but let's just pretend it's like Stanford or Yale, Harvard. A lot of these, they're daily newspapers. They have actual editors. They have a full staff. They put out a paper every single day, even on like, so that's why you can tell he's taking it so seriously because even though it's very corny, seriously, but well, it might become his career. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's what I was about to say. Like it, that's how a lot of these journalists they get into like fellowships with newspapers or it's it's just this is the 80s but think about it now with digital media like us right here we're just chit-chatting with you this that wasn't available yeah it, it, this kind of stuff wasn't available back in the 80s so it's very very cutthroat now it still is very cutthroat but it's harder to be um recognized it's harder to stand out more so than before you would only have the top journalists. Anyway, that, that's not what this movie is. It's not top journalistic integrity. Uh, it right. is a monkey, a red ass baboon, literally, because they they for what it had to be the red ass. The he, red ass baboon. He's walking around his cage with a big old red ass and is the fakest monkey you have ever seen. Looked like a really bad hand puppet. Um well, they did have a real one, and then like, but for like the like when it bit, the experiment, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's like a puppet. <laughs> I um, I I felt like so this came out in eighty eight. When did the Karate Kid come out? Eighty five, eighty four, eighty five. I felt like this took so much from the Karate Kid. Like with the bullies, which are actual, they took it further. They're rapists. Yeah. Uh, you got the good guys versus the bad guys. Well, that's common thing. I know, but like <clears throat> the way that they did it, they even dressed up in Skullomania. It was a Halloween party. The Karate Kids. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I I feel like it it really took a lot from the original Karate Kid. Um, the professor who was doing the experiments he was mentoring you know these students kind of like mr miyagi and daniel and you've got the girl love interest but now you've got two because it's two boys and two girls you've got the halloween party you've got like a lot of conflict and then you just throw in some like weird rabid 
Well, the funny thing I got about you know beginning of this movie was it's very reminiscent and it may have been an influence on 28 Days Later with the whole like monkey starting the virus. And, and that and, was you know an actual serious movie. Right. I, I don't know. Well, you remember though when the baboon gets out of the building and like the cop car comes and he throws it. he throws his hand. Ah! And gets hit. <laughs> I and I often wonder because. Sometimes you can really just tell the decade of a movie without, um, so you go back to like the forties and the thirties and the fifties where it's like the old glam Hollywood, you can really see the difference. And then you're into the sixties and it's a little bit more avant-garde. And even though they have the ability to do color, they do a lot of black and white just because, you know, the seventies are very, um, gritty and when you get to the 80s the, it is it is over the top and very campy like a lot and i don't know if it's because it was becoming um there were more um production companies and there were more like lower budget that well, you and were, i we always kind of watch these documentaries on these companies like you know um Who's the one that does all uh, talks like Avenger? Um, oh no, Shaw wrote no. no that's, that's, that's the fucking Kung Fu. Yeah. Uh, um, God damn, what is? It? It's killing me. Anyway, it, it, it sort of builds from there. So these these filmmakers, when when so, something like Friday the Thirteenth goes big, they're like, oh shit! Every other label or studio is mm -hmm. like, we got we got to capitalize on this right now. So they all start putting out all these films. And it becomes like music sometimes. It just becomes like oversaturated mm -hmm. with stuff. So then that's why you start getting the, the really B grades and C grades of horror. Uh, but a lot of times we end up loving a lot of this shit because we can't get enough of it. So it's it's something that we enjoy. Plus, you know that what we just watched, pack. What is it called? Primal Rage. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go call it Pack of Rage. I don't. <laughs> that makes no sense. There was anyway. Six Pack of the Rage. Six Pack of Rage. Um, I think just because from the first minute of this movie, you know that this is like, you know, the D-list. It's not even the B-list. It's the D-list. And they're not trying too hard no, at all. Not. The acting is bad. I don't think anybody, really, except for maybe the guy who plays Nash, really wanted to be there. <laughs> I think maybe the professor too, but he was doing like his best William Shatner the entire time. He was so like. Oh, is that the one I was getting with the uh, the student? Yes. In the car. Oh, there's Nancy. <laughs> Looks like she's well, on sure, drugs. I'm sure it might not be too hard to get your grade up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everything is campy, but. It's got like a real story <laughs> with a real story arc that you can follow and um story arc story arc <laughs> but I um well the film to me like it uh at least in terms like the gore and and special effects are pretty good in this Oh gosh yeah I you know like I was just thinking about the um the zombie makeup Yeah and it, it, it's all you practical. and I were kind of laughing because it's sort of like a a mishmash of like zombies, Evil Dead, and maybe even Exorcist. So you kind of get a little bit of all that. With and the, the they like you know how when looks. you watch um, a lot of zombie movies, they turn really fast and then they're like zombies. These start out slow. It's very slow, and it's like they have a sickness, and they still have some kind of like coherent. For thing. instance, like. Duffy Doolittle, who started it all by getting bit by the monkey. And look at I Duffy. I got something in my teeth. I was going to say, look at Duffy right now. Put that back up. Look at Duffy. So this is practical makeup that somebody did, and he does look like maybe he has a weird virus or, I don't want to say disease, but it's actual makeup, but without, it, and it's not like you have like all these prosthetics or something, but it, it's, it's good. And um, oh, what was the girl? The girl with the long dark hair who also Debbie, little Debbie. Debbie. Thank you. She's the one that gets to hickey there. Mm -hmm. 
gets infected. <laughs> so he, yeah, he got his primal rage on a little bit too soon and, and bit Debbie. And it was, oh, is that a hickey from Duffy? Yeah. <laughs> when she, she was just trying to study. She's sitting and studying. He's a nice guy, but he's a biter. He's a biter. <laughs> So she, after she was, you know, they, they were making out a little bit and then he bit her and then she's like, oh, you're being too aggressive. And he was just kind of, he's, cause Duffy's a little bit nerdy, you know, he's just, but he also has the primal rage. So after the fact and, and Debbie starts like sweating and she's, you know, catching her, her primal rage too. Baby, you got real ugly. Yeah. She like, <laughs> but it, it was just. They didn't like just make her snap and she magically turns into a zombie. She was sitting on the couch studying and then her roommate walks in and, and was like, what's going on? Oh my God. And she's like, I'm fine. I just need to study. I'm going to lay down. I just need to sleep. I just need to sleep. I swear. She looked like she had the flu on steroids. She looked like ass. Yeah. So... The little details when they do things like that in the movie made me appreciate it a little bit more. It's really bad and really campy, but then they still took it seriously enough to develop a story and finish the story. Yeah, uh, like I said, the gore is pretty decent. The kill scenes are cool, uh, especially during the Halloween party when the three karate kids got there and started raising havoc. Because they got bit too because... Um, well, they tried to rape Debbie. They tried to rape Debbie. While she was sick. She was not... She was raging out, running from her dorm. Then they grab her and try to rape her and take her back to their dorm. She bites them all. But the, you're right, the, the Halloween party, when they come in in Skull and Mania. Like, remember the dude that had, like, the the three heads with the faucets? and then yeah, these, these are the weirdest. The blood was coming out of the faucet. Yeah, the weirdest but most interesting Halloween costumes. Uh, yeah, I think when you when you think about any movie that deals with, like, Halloween costumes, like, this one had, like, the most collection of ones and very interesting ones. Like a big giant sense. nose. Yeah, it was really nice. And um the one guy, the way he he was killed was crazy because he had kind of like this if you've ever seen um Batman Begins like with the scarecrow and he had like the bag over his head and then he had like the the rope. Mm -hmm. Well Skullomania took the rope and wrapped it around the, the basketball, basketball net and like hit the button and hung him. Just right there, everyone's right dancing there, around. Everyone's like, dancing. Oh, it's just part and party, man. He's hanging around with us. And so there are parts of this movie that, you know, honestly, I don't know if I'd ever watch this again, but if it was on TV and I was just like zipping around the house doing chores or something. One thing I thought was interesting was the difference between Duffy raging out versus Debbie. So Debbie was a typical, like, hey, zombie, like, I'm going to fuck shit up, you know, like, yeah. But Duffy, he actually started acting like the ape. <laughs> it's like, Aah! he's like swinging shit around and all that crazy. I remember he ripped the sign out and started like banging it on the car. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I also, you know, he's patient zero. So maybe because it's like a virus and it's all, maybe that. Also, it, you think it's like mutating mm -hmm. as, as he's giving it away. As you go through different people. Give it away, give it away, give it away. I'm wondering if that like. If that was on purpose, or I mean, maybe clearly, clearly not. This is like low budget, but yeah, I don't think they thought out as much as we're deep thinking this. Shit. They're like, here's your script, <laughs> know it, and then here's your five hundred bucks for the week. You know, this took three days now, to shoot. Without a doubt, one of the funniest things of this film. Okay, uh, there's this band called the Facade. Band. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So on. during the Halloween party, right? So they're playing song. And I've already forgot the title, which it will get stuck in your head if you watch the film. You'll remember by the end of the film, trust because me. Because they play it in all the full time. twice. Yeah. So they do the entire party. So while you got all this killing going on, the song's still going. Like, they don't end it. They play it to the end. Then come the credits at the end of the movie. Credits roll on. The song starts up again. Kid you not, it had to be at least... Two minutes after the credits were done, like the screen is black. It's black. 
The song is still playing all the way to the end. I, I don't know what they did to sell the idea. They had to play the entire fucking song. They could have edited it. They didn't have enough credits for the fucking song. That's how bad the movie was. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm like, dude, what kind of blackmail do you have to get this song played twice in full? Either that or, you know, maybe the editor and producer and all just said, Fuck it. it must have been a, or it's all the same person. His daughter's band or something. Yeah, something it's all crazy the same person. Shit. He's like, okay, it's almost done. This is going to be a hit. We're going to push it hard. <laughs> We're just going to keep playing it until it gets stuck in your head, and then you're done. You're you're listening to it for the rest of the uh, rest of the year. Now, the other thing about the soundtrack is there's this other band called Steel Grave, and that was like Steel a... Grave? a yeah, so that that was like an alter ego to a band from Italy called Gow G O W, and uh, they were a heavy metal band during the eighties. They only did one album, but the two songs that appear on Primal Rage coincidentally also appear on Dario Gento's opera movie. So both of the songs, the same songs. Yep. Interesting. Yep. So I thought that was an interesting thing that I did not was aware of. So. Uh, and Argento has always been known to play a lot of metal and rock bands in his movies, so especially back then. Uh, but that was an interesting twist there. So anyway, very uh, cheesy horror if you like it. Mm -hmm. um, I think you kind of hit on the head, though, as terms like where it falls in the alphabet, like D list. It definitely falls there for me. My rating is a five out of ten for this. Oh, mine too. So it, you know, it's a good. For me, it's a good thing for a one-time watch, but you know, unlike some other '80s stuff where we'll go back time and time yeah, again, like the Lost Boys. Well, that's better quality. That's though. an A-list kind of, you know, but it started. If you think about it, and the time, it was all around the, the same time. It started off with the campiness, but it's just much better. Like, um, well, I think actors. like even if we get around to it, I don't know if we'll actually review it, but um. I've seen it before. She had a, a movie called Final Exam. I do remember liking that much better than that. So, like I said, there's different degrees of these these bad movies mm -hmm. out there. But you were kind of hitting the nail on the head. Like everybody, if I mean, I know it's not vampires, but it was zombies. Um, you know, Lost Boys is successful and looks great, and you've got you know cute teenage boys, and that's kind of like what this people was. can act. Yeah, and people can act. <laughs> Um, you're trying to just photocopy off of a photocopy and the quality just degrades. Yeah. I'm probably like, I'm I mean, there's some hidden gems out there. I mean, I've seen some films within the last two or three years that I'm like, had never seen before. Like the Prowler. That's actually a pretty quality, uh, A's horror flick, uh, that I had never seen previously. I'm um, saying with the burning or the burning? I haven't seen that yet. Uh, it's on. I think what's it's on it, Shutter. What's What's it about? It's. It has as um. Fuck. What is his name? Actually, I might be confusing him with another one. I have to check that. But it has some familiar faces. Um, but it, it was actually kind of done around the same time as Friday the Thirteenth, the original one. And initially, I think was it was it uh Savini was supposed to do. Savini might have did the. Special effects for the burning or vice versa. I can't remember. I think he did it for the burning, but not for Friday 13th. He came back later for Friday 13th mm -hmm. and the second one. But uh, yeah, it, you know, it, Joe Bob was one that, you know, and Shutter was one of these films where people were talking about this film a lot. I was like, I've never heard of it. So I checked it out, liked it. Uh, I actually like it a lot better than Friday 13th. I'm not trying to badmouth that franchise at all, but I think the burning's a more superior movie. Uh, in that regard, but either way, uh, yeah, so it, it's just it just depends on the movies you see and how you feel about them overall. I mean, I've seen some movies that are considered really great or not very great at all for me. <laughs> I think I'm I'm kind of in that um vein too, where I have kind of like my sentimental favorites, mm -hmm. even if they like. The funny, I think the best example for he and I is the Goonies. Like I saw the Goonies when I was a child and I watched it a lot and I was just 
enamored and everybody knows like there's these huge stars and they grew up to be you know stars and everything and it was a big deal you watch it 30 years later he'd never seen it and he's like this is the cheesiest like worst effects like because it was like just like well it, yeah it's not even just that just i didn't and it you didn't resonate identify with, me. with it because you're same not thing with monster squad people love the shit out I of the movie and i never kid, saw it until more kid. recently and i'm just like Ugh. you're not gonna you're not gonna like really get it because it's a kid's movie it would just be like okay meanwhile i'm one of those people who saw saturday the 14th and i'm like yeah this is great and then i gotta be like are you fucking serious right now dude <laughs> <laughs> but i'm gonna to that point you know um goonies and monster squad i watched when i was a kid and i loved it um but we as adults are able to d there are good children's movies that we've watched and we don't have children but we still appreciate the movies like the toy story movies puss in boots cars like there are lots of movies that we've seen sometimes just be like oh look what's on and and it's a good movie it's it's well directed well acted funny and the adults can still watch it and enjoy it yep well thank you all for checking out this review appreciate it much uh be sure to check it out if you haven't seen it, at least good one time viewing yeah it's a good one time um it would it's great it's a great party movie yeah put it on while you have a bunch of people over because you don't really have to pay attention to a lot as the tagline says there's a new party animal on campus she'll bring out the beast in you oh my god <laughs> all right all Take care of yourselves. Keep it metal. We'll talk at you later. Have a good weekend.